kena kan? So, sekolah saya. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Sheila Sierra, your moderator. We will start in two minutes. So uh, just settle down. And uh, yeah, I'll start the put in two minutes. Thank you, Paul. Again, and on behalf of PIDS President Celia Reyes, I would like to welcome all of you to another edition of the PIDS webinar series where we tackle development issues based on data and evidence. The Philippines is highly vulnerable to natural hazards given its location along the Pacific Ring of Fire and Typhoon Belt. And compounding this is the perennial threat of climate change, which has triggered extreme weather events. This have mostly affected our agricultural sector, as many of our agricultural regions sit on the Typhoon Belt, making them more vulnerable to poverty and other risks. It is also important to know that a significant portion of the poor live in agricultural areas. And to help farmers cope with their losses and more importantly, mitigate risks, the government implements certain programs, one of which is agricultural insurance. In the country, this is provided by the Philippine Crop Insurance Corporation to small farmers and fisher folk. The question now is, how are these programs being implemented and are they reaching their intended beneficiaries? This afternoon, our very own uh, PIDS President, Dr. Celia Reyes, will be presenting the study that she conducted with a PIDS fellow, Aubrey Tabuga, former um, supervising research specialist, Nico Borromeo, research specialist, Specialist Arkin Arboneda and research analyst Carlos Caballero. And their study look into the issues affecting the uh, impact and inclusiveness of uh, this agricultural insurance programs. 
and they also provided recommendations to address uh, the problems and make uh, agricultural insurance more inclusive. In addition, we will also hear the comments and reactions of the PCIC through its Vice President for Corporate Business Affairs Group, Engineer Luther Salting. We are also grateful for the presence of the following officials in our webinar today. Senator Cynthia Villar, Agriculture Under Secretary for Policy and Planning, Rodolfo Vicera, PCIC President, Attorney Jovi Bernabe, who is representing Agriculture uh, Secretary William Dar, Banco Central ng Pilipinas Board Member, Dr. Bruce Celentino, Agricultural Credit Policy Council Executive Director, Jocelyn Badiola, and Insurance Commission Deputy Commissioner, Ferdinand Florendo. From the academe, we have um, UP Los Baños College of Economics and Management Department Chair, Doc, uh, Dr. Agham Cuevas, and UPLB College of Arts and Sciences Dean, Dr. Filino Lansigan. From the private sector, we would also like to acknowledge the presence of uh, Philippine Insurers and Reinsurers Association Executive Director Michael Reliosa and Villar Foundation Executive Director Attorney Reggie Taman. Thank you very much to all the officials present today, to the rest of the participants, and to our viewers on Facebook. We at PIDS look forward to a fruitful discussion with all of you this afternoon. And speaking of fruitful discussion, um, allow me at this point to discuss our guidelines for the open forum. So while the presentation is uh, ongoing or uh, during the open forum, if you have any question, please use the chat box, which is located at the lower part of the screen. Uh, please type your name and uh, your affiliation and um, your question, and uh, you will be called during the open forum. Make sure that you are sending your message to all participants and not to a particular person. And for our for all our attendees uh, on WebEx, you may have noticed that your mic microphone is muted, uh, but don't worry because we will unmute it during the open forum in case you have a question. And for our viewers, viewers on Facebook, we also encourage you to participate. Just type your question using the comment uh, section of Facebook. Okay, so let us now proceed to the presentation and our speaker for today is uh, none other than the president of the PIDS, actually the first female president of the Institute. She specialized specializes in the field of. Um, she specializes in the field of econometrics and has conducted and published numerous research and policy papers on poverty assessments and evaluation of social protection programs. She is also the network leader of the community-based monitoring system. And she has also served as president of the Philippine Economic Society in 2011, and has been an advisor to various national government technical working groups on poverty monitoring and indicator systems in the country since the early 1990s. She has been the chairperson of the Technical Committee on Poverty Statistics convened by the National Statistical Co Coordination Board since 2003. And she's also the Editor-in-Chief of the Philippine Journal of Development, uh, PIDS, uh, Multidisciplinary Social Science Journal. She's a cum laude graduate of Bachelor of Science in, in Statistics and as a Master of Arts degree in economics from the University of the Philippines, and as a Doctor of Philosophy degree in economics from the University of Pennsylvania. Friends, Dr. Celia Reyes. Thank you, Sheila. Um, Senator Villar, uh, PCIC President Jovi Bernabe, um, Monetary Board Member Bruce Delentino, the other officials and um, friends. Um, Thank you for giving me this opportunity to share our study on the agricultural insurance program. As Sheil has mentioned, um, the agri agricultural sector faces many risks, including um, typhoons, um, drought, uh, climate related, uh, climate change related uh, events. And so for this afternoon, uh, we'll be focusing on the risk faced by those in the agricultural um, sector. Next. Um, what I will be what I will be presenting this afternoon is based on our discussion paper towards a more inclusive uh, previous slide, please. Um, 
more inclusive agricultural insurance program, which has been prepared um, in collaboration with Dr. Aubrey Tabuga, our research associate, Nico Borromeo, and our research assistants, Arkin and Arkin Arboneda and Carlos Caballero. Um, this work actually draws on um, previous work that we have done on the agricultural insurance program. If we can go to the next slide. Um, we have been working on the agricultural insurance program since 2015 and have produced um, several papers looking at um, the implement the design, the implementation, as well as the impacts of the agricultural insurance program. Um, next slide, please. So all of these papers can actually be found at the PIDS website. So, but what I'll be focusing on right now is our more recent paper on making the agricultural insurance program more inclusive. Next slide, please. Um, so for this afternoon, I'll present the motivation of the study, um, discuss the agricultural segments in the Philippines, um, describe the program being offered by PCIC, um, farmers' awareness of agricultural insurance, and some updates that we recently got from PCIC and some summary and recommendations. Um, why did we look at this study? After having done about 10 studies on the agricultural insurance program, we thought that it would be good to um, revisit um, the program and see what has been done since 20, um, since we last did the study in 2015, 2017. Uh, we all know that agricultural insurance is used as a mechanism for managing risk, providing a safety net for agricultural producers. And so it, this is a very important tool for farmers. Um, but vital to the development or improvement of the agricultural insurance program design is um, a better understanding of the segments of the Philippine agriculture. If we wanted it to be more inclusive in coverage, we need to be able to understand which segments of the agricultural sector are already being reached by the program and which segments still have to be reached. And so this could have implications in terms of the possible priority areas in the expansion of the current agricultural insurance program. We also wanted to revisit improvements in the implementation to ensure greater coverage. Next, please. So let me turn to a discussion on the agricultural segments in the Philippines. Next, please. Um, at the macro level, what we're seeing is that there has been a continuous decline in the number of agricultural workers since 2011. I think with the um, transformation of the economy, we're seeing that the share of the agriculture sector the GDP has been going down. Um, in fact, um, I look at my numbers, the share of agricultural gross value added to GDP has declined from 15.2% in 2000 to 9.2% in 2019. And also the share of agricultural employment to total employment has actually declined from 37.1% in 2000 to 22.9% in 2019. And the chart before us shows um, the decline in the number of workers engaged in agriculture. If you can look at the yellow, yeah. yellow line, um, it shows that in 2011, the number of workers engaged in agriculture is about 12.267 million. And that has gone down to 9.998 million workers in 2018 and further to about 9.2 million workers in 2019. And this has been brought about, uh, the long-term decline could be attributed to um, economic factors such as the growth, uh, the transformation of the economy, shifting away from agriculture and going more into services and industry sector. Next. Um, in terms of agricultural products, um, we can look at the, yellow, okay, uh, let me call it yellow, yellow line, that would pertain to Palai. So increasing uh, a little bit over time, um, that's in terms of um, output, fiscal output, and in terms of uh, corn, you can follow the red line, um, slightly below the line for um, Palai, 
uh, also slightly increasing, but what is really uh, has been increasing significantly over time, and uh, and that would be your high value uh, crops, and that would be um, uh, shown by the brown brown line. And the regional top producers in 2018 for Palai would be Central Luzon, Cagayan Valley, and Western Visayas, and then for um, Corn it would be Cagayan Valley, Northern Mindanao, and South Sargen. And for high value crops, it would be Western Visayas, Northern Mindanao, and um, cannot see my, uh, it would be Davao. Next, please. Um, let me describe briefly the RSBSA because this is actually a very important um, uh, part of this uh, agricultural uh, insurance program and how we could make it more inclusive. The largest known registry of agricultural producers in the Philippines is the R RSBSA, and that was done in 2012, um, initiated by uh, BBM um, and implemented by um, uh, then NSO. Um, with the participation of other government agencies as well. So this RSBSA is a database of information on farmers, laborers, and fisher folk na nationwide, excluding NCR and ARMM. And the RSBSA registered about 10 million agricultural producers, of which 8.9 million are engaged in farming as either farmers or laborers. The pie chart would indicate the different groups so you would have about 3.3 million who are farmers only, 3.3 uh, million who are farm laborers. Then you have about 893,000 who are fishermen and you would have combinations of farmers and fishermen, farmers and farm laborers and so forth. And all of them would constitute about 10 million agricultural producers. Next please. Um, now what you can see before you is the data coming from the census of agriculture 2012 and uh, from there we can see that uh, the farm la land holdings that are at most three hectares comprise about 88.9 percent of farm holdings and 48.4 percent of total farm area in the philippines uh, the census of agriculture is, uh, and fisheries is actually done by the philippine statistics authority and then you have the registry, the RSBSA, which I have described earlier, um, also done for the same year, primarily the same year. And um, what you see is that there is a disparity in terms of um, the total number of farms um, the, and the area as well. Uh, I think this is something that needs to be um, reconciled. Um, we have actually taken a closer look in our previous studies on the RSBSA, and we have noted some of the um, deficiencies, if I may call it that, of the RSBSA. Um, and, um, and we can see here the, the differences. Um, so for instance,
And I'd like to share with you um, an earlier study we did on chronic and transient um, poverty. Um, again, we find that a large segment of the agricultural sector are either, are either chronic poor or transient poor. Um, you can see that because of the shocks, there are considerable movements in and out of poverty among households engaged in agriculture. Um, if you look at the chart, the green um, circles, okay, would indicate the proportion of households who are not income poor, meaning non-poor, and the red circles would indicate the proportion who are poor, income poor. So we were able to make use of a panel data, meaning uh, follow or track the same households over time using the Family Income and Expenditure Survey for 2003, 2006, and 2009. And what you see is that um, some who were non-poor uh, became poor the next period or retained or remained non-poor. And then if you go to 2009, again, some of those who were who remained non-poor still became, still remained non-poor in 2009. And that those are what we call the never poor. Um, so you have about 33% of those who were, um, of, of the agricultural uh, households who, who were never poor in the three periods. On the other hand, if you look at the bottom of the chart, um, you will find a group who we label as PPP, meaning they were consistently poor all throughout the three periods. And they constitute about one fourth of the total number of households, so 25.6%. So um, you have about 26% um, who are always poor in the three periods and about 41% who are sometimes poor in these three periods and only about 33% who are never poor. And, and we think that if you provide adequate safety nets to farmers, you can actually assist this farmer so that even when confronted with shocks, they can easily recover from the shocks and move out of poverty more quickly. So that's how important um, tools that can mitigate risk, such as agricultural insurance can be. Next, please. So uh, what would be the role of agricultural insurance? So if we look at this particular chart, what we find is that uh, you have these farm inputs and they're used to produce um, agricultural output that, could, um, that would yield income to the farmers and that would have implications on whether they um, remain poor or move out of poverty. When you have natural calamities like typhoons, flood, floods and drought and other risks such as pests and diseases that could impact on um, their output and consequently their income. And so agricultural insurance is a risk management tool that can actually mitigate this risk. And um, so even if a farmer experiences, um, for instance, uh, flooding, um, if a farmer is equipped with um, a tool such as agricultural insurance, then um, even if his harvest is devastated during a particular season, he's able to plant again the next season and recover more quickly from that shock. Next, please. So the benefits of crop insurance to farmers would be um, in terms of managing risk, providing farmers funds to cover production costs for the next season, helping farmers to finance household consumption after a shock so they can smooth out their consumption. And this is actually better than an agricultural guarantee fund where you're actually helping the more the lenders uh, rather than the farmer. Next, please. So agricultural insurance could be an effective risk management tool that can significantly reduce poverty among agricultural households. Next, please. So let me um, touch briefly about some of the important features of the um, agricultural insurance program that's being implemented by the Philippine Crop Insurance Corporation. Next, please. So the principal mandate of PCIC is to provide insurance protection to farmers against losses arising from natural calamities, 
plant diseases and pest infestation of their crops and other agricultural assets. And in line with this, PCIC has seven major product lines, rice, corn, high value crops, livestock, fisheries, including non-crop agricultural asset and credit and life term. Non-crop agricultural asset is really, uh, would cover, for instance, warehouses, uh, boats, irrigation facilities, and other farm equipment. And credit and life term would cover accident and life um, insurance. And um, primarily insurance coverage is based on the cost of production inputs or if the farmer is self-financed or amount of loan if the farmer is borrowing. So it's primarily a production cost insurance. Uh, although from time to time, PCK, PCIC can also allow uh, going beyond the production cost um, and um, having an insurance cover higher than the production cost. Next, please. So um, just to give us an example uh, for uh, the period of cover for temporary crops, one cropping season or from planting to harvesting, um, and for permanent crops, that would be one year. There could be different types of insurance cover, multi-risk cover, um, which would include natural disasters, selected major plant diseases, and pest inf infestations, and you would also have the natural disaster cover. And what I'm showing you here would just be some examples in terms of maximum cover ceilings for rice and corn insurance. So depending on the variety and whether it's irrigated uh, or for seed production and so forth, the maximum cover ceiling could be from um, 41,000 to 65,000. And then for corn, it's much higher, um, up to 76,000. Next, please. Um, for rice and corn insurance, premium rate is variable per region, season and risk classification, and premium rates are shared by the farmer, lending institution, borrowing, and the government. On the other hand, for other insurance lines, premium rates are borne solely by the farmer. So that's one distinction here. Um, and I think this reflects also the um, prioritization of um, the Department of Agriculture. Uh, that uh, we actually provide greater assistance to rice and corn farmers. So even in the case of insurance, um, the government pays for part of the um, premium for rice and corn farmers, but for other insurance lines, for, for instance, for high value crops, uh, the premium rates are borne solely by the farmer. Next, please. Uh, but in addition to the regular programs, PCIC also offers special programs wherein the insurance premium is fully subsidized. And this is something that has grown significantly um, in recent years. Um, using the registry system for basic sectors in agriculture, um, they have this program that provides coverage for farmers and fisher folk registered under the RSBSA. And um, we know that there are a lot and the government cannot cover all of them. And so PCIC prioritizes them based on their location and size of farm land holding. And so first priority would be those with 1.5 hectares and below. Second priority would be 1.5 to 2 hectares. And um, third priority would be 2 to 3 hectares. And fourth priority would be more with those with more than 3 hectares and a maximum of three hectares per farmer is entitled to full premium subsidy. Um, the amount of cover, or meaning the amount of benefits that they can get uh, varies. If it's a borrowing farmer, it would be the amount of loan subject to cover selling per hectare. And for the self-financed farmer, those who are not borrowing, the maximum cover is 20,000 per hectare. This is for the RSBSA special program. Next, please. So I think even from that, we can see that um, the maximum cover is way below the production cost. Um, in addition, um, there are also other programs under the Department of Agriculture, such as the Sikat Saka program, which targets rice farmers in 45 major rice producing provinces. Um, you also have the Weather Adverse Rice Areas Program, and here the amount of cover would be a maximum 10,000 per hectare. Again, um, covering rice farmers. You have um, other programs such as the Program for Unified Lending in Agriculture. You have high yielding technology adaptation. Uh, you still have, and, and during the time of Yolanda, and uh, I think even up to 
um, now you still have the Yolanda Rehabilitation and Recovery Program and the Survival Recovery Assistance Program. So some of these programs are actually um, loans um, where uh, crop insurance is actually a requirement for, um, for these loans. Next. Um, and also uh, you have the Agrarian Production Credit Program and Credit Assistance Program for Program Beneficiaries Development. So the main um, beneficiaries here are the ARBs or um, a greater reform beneficiaries. And again, the amount of cover would be uh, the amount of loan granted by the land bank. Next, please. So here we can see the number of insured farmers and fisher folk by insurance program. And we can see that the bulk of them are actually under the special program. So if you look at the 2019 data and the pattern is, is uh, basically the same for, for the other years, um, Really, the bulk of them uh, for 2019, you have 2.2 million out of the 3.0, uh, 3.1 million insured farmers and fisher for folk are under the special programs, and only 854,000 are under the regular uh, programs. Which means that for the special programs, the government is actually paying. Government or PCIC, national government or PCIC, and other government agencies are paying for the. Um, for the premium. Next, please. Um, because of uh, some difficulties or challenges faced by farmers in um, uh, getting their claims uh, when, they're, when they experience damages, the PCIC has piloted the index-based crop insurance. Um, since 2011, what this uh, because right now the practice is if, if the farmer experienced some damages, there's an adjuster that visits the farm and assesses uh, the damage and the compensation that the farmer gets is actually based on the actual damage um, experienced by the farmer. With an index-based crop insurance, um, for instance, the weather index-based insurance it's actually determined, the amount of compensation would be determined on some weather um, parameter, weather index, so for instance, the amount of rainfall that occurs in that particular area. So PCIC has been exerting efforts to address um, uh, challenges in the processing of claims, uh, making sure that they're um, uh, processed quickly. And so they have piloted this index-based crop insurance, but. Um, uh, I think up to this date, they're still not offering this on a regular basis, so it's still being piloted. And I think one of the major um, challenges here is really coming up with, um, for instance, for the weather index-based insurance, um, weather information that's really for that particular area. Uh, right now, um, PAGASA generates um, information for a bigger area. Um, and we know that because of the topography of the Philippines, um, the weather or the, for instance, the amount of rainfall um, in one barangay could be very different from the other barangays, even in the same municipality. So I think that's one of the challenges in implementing um, an index-based, a weather index-based insurance. So um, unless I'm mistaken, I think up to now, um, it's still being piloted, refining this particular um, index-based crop insurance scheme. Next, please. So what's the process of securing agricultural insurance? Um, right now, the farmer insures, insures his or her farm parcel. The, the farmer has to submit all the requirements for insurance application and pays the corresponding premium uh, amount. Here, I, I think PCIC has done a lot of efforts towards simplifying the requirements. And um, for those who are under the RSBSA program and other special programs, they don't need to pay the corresponding premium amount. And um, in, in some cases, in partnership with LGUs, it's the local government who pays for the insurance premium. The amount of insurance cover is equivalent to its estimated farm production expenses, if self-financed, or amount of production loan, if borrowing. And then the farmer starts planting. And for instance, if a farm, if a few days before harvest, a typhoon hits the area and damages the farmer's crops, 
the farmer actually claims for damages and the farmer is indemnified by the PCIC, which is equivalent to the full amount of his insurance cover. So for instance, I think this is one of the, the challenges I mentioned earlier. If for instance, the farm is completely damaged, um, even if, uh, for instance, the cost of production is about 45,000 in the case of rice, if the insurance cover is only 20,000, because that is what is provided, for instance, under our, our SBSA program, the farmer only gets 20,000. That, that's the indemnity that the farmer will, will get. So this is where the amount of insurance cover is very important. If we want the farmers to be able to recover quickly. He needs to have enough funds to be able to cover the cost of uh, the production cost for the next planting season. Next, please. So let me just provide some updates on the agriculture insurance program. Next, please. Um, so number of insured farms is significantly increasing. Um, 3.1 million policies issued in 2019. I, I would not say 3.1 million farmers uh, uh, were insured in 2019 because I, I think there are. It's possible that there could be some farmers who availed of more than one type of insurance. So, for instance, a farmer who enrolled his parcel uh, for crop insurance might also have a build of term insurance. And so um, they could be, there could be some duplication in, in, in counting. And so I think it's more accurate to say the 3.1 million policies were issued in, in 2019. And what the chart shows would be um, those policies or um, that were insured given the different types of um, insurance lines of PCIC. And we can see here that again, RICE would have the, biggest share. It's the com most commonly insured agricultural product, 34.4% in 2018 and 32.3% in 2019. And um, uh, HBCC is still far below um, that. And I think that's something that we might want to take a closer look at because um, that's where you have higher productivity. Um, that's where um, we find that farmers who are planting HBCs you tend to be better off than those who are planting um, corn or, or rice. Also, we find that farmers enrolled under credit and term insurance comprise 26.9% of total insured in 2019. Um, remember, this term insurance is for accident and life, uh, life um, insurance, and that's the second, uh, no. yes. Okay, third. Okay. Um, okay. I'm having difficulty with, with my colors, so um, bear with me. So, um, the, but what we're finding is that in 2019, the term insurance comprised, farmers enrolled under credit and term insurance comprised about one fourth of the total insured in 2019. Next, please. So majority of the insured pro farmers are actually enrolled under the PCIC special program. So um, you have the regular, the three um, stack bars here re uh, relate to regular programs. That's the bottom and then the RSBSA special program. And the, the, the one on top would be the other special programs. So since 2016, more than 60% of all insured farmers are enrolled under the special programs of the PCIC meaning they are, their, sub, their premiums are subsidized. And in fact, in 2019, it constitutes about 80%. And farmers enrolled under the RSBSA program comprised 59.2% in 2018 and 52.1% in 2019 of the total number of insured. Next, please. Um, and then in terms of area also, um, we're finding that uh, it has been increasing. This is based on the PCIC um, report from almost 500,000 hectares insured in 2013. The coverage increased to 2.3 million hectares in 2019. And compared with the total farm area of the Philippines based on the RSBSA, which is 3.5 million hectares in 2012. Again, take note that this is much lower than the estimate of from the Census of Agriculture and Fisheries. 
crop insurance is covering 75.4% of total farm area in the country. That's based on the data from PCIC. But I think um, Mr. Salting probably can, can clarify, but I think this could actually, there could actually be some duplication of the area because if a farmer, um, for instance, a rice farmer insures the same parcel for two planting seasons, um, the same parcel could be counted uh, twice. Um, next, please. The, also, in terms of um, the, the subsidy, the share of government premium subsidy has been significantly increasing. Um, farmer shares, in the case of regular programs, account for less than 10% of the collected, collected premium. And the premium subsidy is coming from the General Appropriations Act, the Department of Agriculture and LGUs account for 3.5 billion pesos, or 72.3% of total premium collected in 2018. What this means is that um, there has been an increase, but it's mainly because of the government uh, providing free insurance to, to the farmers. But we all know how important insurance is, and so this is something that um, farmers need to take into account when they um, do their farming. Uh, right now, it's not part of their production cost. They don't really incorporate that as part of their production cost, but um, this is something that we think uh, the, the free insurance um, program needs to be really targeted to the very poor or the small landholders hold, because we think that those who can afford should pay for the crop insurance. And if you really, the all, other implication is that if you really want to cover all of the small farmers, that has a big implication on the subsidies that would be coming from the national government or from the from the GAA, from the DA and the LGUs. So that could have some sustainability, fiscal sustainability issue. Next. Um, sources of information on agri-insurance. Um, we recent studies also show the role of local government unit agricultural technicians as one of the key sources of agricultural insurance information. And um, Many farmers become aware of this insurance program only when they try to avail of credit services because the agri-insurance is part of the loan requirement. Um, also, we found that other farmers know of only of the agricultural insurance after experiencing a calamity. So, for instance, uh, an FGD that we conducted in Cagayan showed that farmers learned about agricultural insurance after Typhoon Ompong as other farmers in their community were able to file for insurance claims. And they said that had they had they been informed about agricultural insurance, these farmers would be very much willing to be insured under the program. So um, we know that PCIC has done a lot of efforts since we first did our study in terms of disseminating um, the information about insurance to more farmers. But I think there are still some segments of the agricultural sector that needs to be reached by um, more information about the insurance program. Next, please. Um, in recent years, there's been an increase in the number of insured farmers, indicating increasing level of awareness among farmers. And the share of insured farmers and fisher folk to total farmers and fisher folk as listed in the RSBSA has also increased. So, for instance, the, penet the, the number of farmers and fisher folk insured as reported by PCIC has increased from 1.7 million in 2017 to um, over 3 million in 2019. And if we compute the penetration rate, which is just the number of um, farmers and fisher folk insured um, divided by the, um, the total number of farmers and fisher folk listed in RSBSA, um, we find an increasing penetration rate from 17.55% in 2017 to 31.64% in 2019. Um, but as I mentioned earlier, there could be some double counting if farmers actually register or enroll in more than one product line. And so uh, based on the data coming from the Governance Commission for GOCCs, um, they have some numbers on unique farmers and fisher folk insured, and that brought down, for instance, the number of unique farmers from 1.697 
577 in 2017 to 981, 745. So that the penetration rate uh, from 17.55% goes down to 10.15%. Um, the same for 2018. Um, the number of unique farmers is reduced to 1.717 million from 2.267 million in 2018, um, thereby reducing the penetration rate from 23% to 17.76%. But I think that we don't have yet the data for 2019, but I think the pattern is clear that it has been, the penetration rate is increasing over time, um, but there's still a lot of segments that need to be reached by the agri-insurance program. Next, please. Um, this is the uh, just a table I lifted from our earlier study because I also wanted to show that um, there are some disparities across product lines, um, across uh, different types of farmers. So um, this is something that we computed uh, for our earlier study uh, in 2014. And what we did was we looked at the number of farmers who had who had insurance um, and divided it by the number of, for instance, rice farmers in our SBSA. And what we find, the general pattern is that right, the penetration rate among rice farmers is, gen is generally higher. Um, so for instance, in 2014, it's about 15.82%, much uh, almost twice that of corn. Corn is about 7.19%. And the penetration rate among HVCC high value commercial crops is 1.92 and 2.17% among livestock growers. Of course, this data is for 20, 2014 and I'm sure the numbers have gone up significantly, but I think you would still find the same disparity across different types of farmers with um, rice and corn farmers having higher penetration rates than those farmers engaged in HVCC and livestock. So if you want the agriculture insurance program to be more inclusive, I think this is one of the areas that, that needs to be examined more closely in terms of reaching out to those uh, farmers engaged in HVCC and, and livestock. Next, please. Um, and by region, um, Again, uh, we were incorporating this table to show that there are disparities across region where some regions would have higher penetration rates. And um, uh, something for um, PCIC to, to look at, I I'm sure that the numbers have changed uh, over time. I'm sure the numbers have increased uh, because of the efforts that have been done. But the disparities across regions is something that that could be examined more, more closely so that um, there could be more equitable um, access to insurance across the, the regions. Next, please. Um, and, and in line with this, to be able to um, expand and reach out to, to more uh, farmers and fisher folk, PCA, PCIC also extended its operations by adding more provincial extension offices and service desks. Since 2014, PCIC now has 13 regional offices, 58 provincial extension um, uh, offices, and 20 service desks nationwide. Um, PCIC workforce in its national and regional offices are continuously increasing to cope with the demand for agricultural insurance. I know that when we first did the study, there were very few um, uh, staff and they really had to work, contend with a lot of farmers in each of the regional offices. And they were, I, I think the job orders were even, the number of job orders were even greater than the regular staff. Because if I remember correctly, I think each, uh, regional offices, office only had about 14, less than 20 um, uh, permanent uh, plantilla positions. Next, please. So uh, PCIC has also been establishing partnership and linkages with LGUs and other institutions, um, I, I think, to be able to reach out to, to the farmers. And um, I'd like to mention that um, in our previous study, we looked at the partnership with LGUs and one of the, the scheme or the modality was that LGU linked up with them and provided free or subsidized premium to some of the farmers in their locality. So that's one way that uh, more farmers were covered by LGU 
um, providing for the insurance premiums for the farmers in their localities. Next, please. Um, I think uh, since our earlier study, we've also seen an increase in the insurance cover for rice and corn, um, just by the, this example here, because one of our earlier findings was that, and I think it's still uh, true for today, um, that the rice, that the insurance cover or the maximum benefit that you can get um, for the free insurance um, program is much less than the production cost. And so uh, farmers would not really have enough funds to cover the production cost for the next planting season in case their um, production is completely damaged. Um, the trade-off here is that uh, given the limited funds, the I think the question that that will be faced by, by the implementing agency is, do you want to cover more farmers? Do you want to insure more farmers? Um, but that means providing them smaller insurance cover, or do you want to provide adequate insurance cover? But to do that, you would have to insure less number of farmers. So I think that's one of the dilemmas being faced by, by PCIC, um, the trade-off between um, covering more farmers, but at a lower insurance cover versus um, covering less farmers, but providing adequate insurance cover. And I think if you really want uh, more adequate insurance cover, that means less uh, farmers that you can ensure, but if the targeting is done better, then you can ensure that um, the small, the poorest farmers can actually be the ones that can enjoy the benefits of this free insurance program. Next, please. Um, there have been, we've also noted uh, since our earlier study that there have been improvements in resolution of complaints, but there still need to improve claims processing. So for instance, we find that 90, more than 90% of total complaints received were resolved within 10 days, and about 70% of claims application were processed and settled within 20 days. Although we noted that the um, trend, um, or yeah, the pattern between 2017 and 2018 is that the percentage of claims processed within 20 days has actually uh, gone down. Um, and I, I think the, the challenge here is that, for instance, if there's a, a calamity that I, I remember, um, Haiyan, um, Typhoon Yolanda, where damage affected so many farmers in one area, it, took, it, really, it was really a, really a big challenge for PCIC, and it took a long time to have all of the claims processed. And um, so this is one thing that, that needs to be um, uh, looked at. Next. Um, targeting of beneficiaries for insurance subsidies, as we know, uh, especially right now, I think where the fiscal space um, might probably be limited because of the COVID-19 pandemic, um, the targeting of beneficiaries is very important. Um, the RSBSA is used as the main targeting tool for the provision of free agricultural insurance coverage. Um, since 2016, almost 60% of the insured farmers were enrolled under the RSBSA special program. And although the RSBSA is the largest known registry of agricultural producers nationwide, there's a need to validate the database. Our earlier studies found that there are leakages, meaning there were non-agricultural non producers listed in the registry, and also exclusions, meaning legitimate agricultural producers were not listed in the in the registry. So if you're using this registry as the basis for um, government assistance programs, um, it's very important that this registry is updated and also validated. Yes, please. So in an effort to update the RSBSA, various line agencies submitted a list of farmers and other agricultural producers to the Department of Budget and Management and so DAR submitted a list of about 1.9 million farmers and fisher folk uh, 
BIFAR submitted about 1.2 million, BA about 644,000, PCIC about 21,000, and MIA about 3,000. And this list were consolidated to form RSBSA version 1.1. Um, that's about um, all of this totaled about 3.85 million. And so you have the original list uh, from the RSBSA that was done in 2012, consisting of 9.67 million farmers and fisher folk. And then you have the additional 3.85 million um, from this version 1.1. And the, the Department of Agriculture is tasked to clean and consolidate the registry to account for name duplication in both versions of the RSBSA. Next, please. And um, what PCIC did was to combine and analyze the two versions of the RSBSA, and um, they adjusted the list to account for name duplication. So um, from the 13.5 million records in the combined versions of the RSBSA, uh, PCIC reduced the list to about 10.9 million. But um, we think that this is really more just adding, but we think that uh, some of the names still need to be dropped from the from the list and further validation still needs to, to be done. But I think what is nice to know here is that efforts were made um, to, up, to um, update and, and validate the registry. Next, please. So in terms of summary and recommendations, um, we find that Increasing number, we find an increasing number of farmers with agri-insurance, but still low penetration rate, especially if you look at the different types of uh, product lines and groups of segments of, of the agricultural sector. Uh, the insurance cover of the free insurance program is not enough to cover production costs. It's still um, mainly around 20,000 for, for rice farmers, um, much lower than the 45,000 production costs. Um, there have been improvements in resolution of complaints, but claim processing still need to be improved. There's been increasing level of awareness of the insurance program, but more farmers need to be reached. The RSBSA of 2012 and the expanded version needs to be validated and updated. And providing all farmers with free insurance would be costly. So alternative financing scheme needs to be tapped. And then in terms of more, next please, in terms of more specific recommendations, just the last slide. Um, as the main tool used for the provision of free agricultural insurance, I think the, the um, updating of the RSBSA is the should be the top priority. And with the passage of the CBMS Act, um, uh, this could be used to identify and geotag agricultural households in, in the country. The second is um, in terms of improving penetration rates and targeting of beneficiaries for free insurance. I think that. PCIC can establish um, more partnerships with other institutions um, to reach out to more farmers so that um, the penetration rates, more farmers could be covered and the targeting could be more efficient. And finally, in terms of increasing insurance cover by partnering with LGUs and encouraging farmers to pay for insurance. I think that was one of our concern that with the free insurance program, um, the farmers could get used to not paying for crop insurance. And if this program um, does not get increase, increasing budget over time, um, what will happen to, um, to these farmers? So with that, uh, I'll end my presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mamsel. Before we uh, go to the uh, reaction of the PCIC, uh, we received um, a feedback from several participants that they could not see the option sent to all participants in the chat box. Um, we apologize for this. We are uh, fixing the, the settings on WebEx and uh, we would like to um, request everyone to send to all panelists instead. Okay, at this point, um, let us now listen to the comments of the uh, Philippine Crop Insurance Corporation to the presentation of uh, 
Dr. Reyes, and to deliver the agency's reaction is Engineer Luther Salting, who is uh, representing uh, PCIC President Attorney Jovi Bernabe. Engineer Salting has been with PCIC since uh, 1981 and rose from the ranks of a claims uh, processor, division chief, regional manager, to vice president of the Corporate Business Affairs Group. Friends, joining us from Cagayan de Oro City, here is Engineer Romeo Selting, PCIC Vice President. Okay. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you, Ma'am Sheila. Uh, today, Honorable Senator, Senator Sin Chabiliar, to President of the PIDS, Dr. Celia Reyes, to Director, uh, Director Bajula, one of the members of the Board of Directors of PCIC, to all other officials and to all the FB viewers, good afternoon. I am representing Attorney Jobe Bernabe, President of PCIC and for the Department of Agriculture Secretary William Dow. Now I will be discussing the Agricultural Insurance Program of PCIC, but this is very brief because uh, the programs of PCIC has been just substantively discussed by Dr. Reyes. Which, please. <clears throat> so, for the topic outline, one is the agricultural insurance programs, number two is the distribution channels and workforce, number three is PCIC marketing strategies, number four is information dissemination tools. Five highlights of PCIC's achievements, and number six, which is very important, the PIDS recommendations and PCIC's comments. Next, please. So we have seven insurance programs. We have the rice crop insurance program, the corn crop insurance program, livestock insurance program, the fisheries insurance program, the non-crop agricultural asset insurance, the high value crop insurance program. All of these can be covered and there are free insurance coverage under the RSBSA. And we have the credit and lifestyle insurance, which is the market rated insurance program. Next, please. <clears throat> Next, please. So PCIC as an agricultural insurer is committed to help stabilize the income of agricultural producers, particularly the subsistence farmers or fisher folk against loss of their crops, fishery stocks, livestock and non-crop agricultural assets on account of natural calamities such as typhoons, floods, tornadoes, droughts, earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, hailstorms, and or other perils such as plant pests and diseases. Next, please. <clears throat> PCIC caters mostly the subsistence farmers or those farmers stealing areas of not more than three hectares. Farmers are prioritized based on the size of farm holding, for the RSBSA and non-RSBSA fully 100% subsidized insurance program. The first priority are those farmers stealing 1.5 hectares and below. The second priority are those farmers stealing 1.5 hectares and up to 2 to hectares. Third priority are those farmers stealing 2 hectares up to 3 hectares. The fourth priority are those farmers stealing more than 3 hectares, subsidized coverage of which is limited to 3 hectares only. It is, while, it is worthwhile to note that for 2019, the average holdings of the farmers that we were able to insure under the RSBSA is 1.28 hectares for rice. It's within our first priority, the up to 1.5 hectares. And for corn, 1.42 hectares, also within our first priority farmers. And for the high value crops, 1.44 hectares for farmer also within the first priority of our target sector. As for the amount of cover for the borrowing farmers, the amount of loans subject to cover ceiling, and for the self-financed farmer, the maximum amount of cover is 20,000 per hectare, that is for rice and corn. As mentioned by Dr. Reyes a while ago, that for PCIC, we opt to cover more rice, more farmers, thus we are limiting our coverage to 20,000 per hectare. But it is noted that if we can target the lesser number of farmers and lesser land holdings, then most of the beneficiaries will cover those 
who need it most. Note that by catering farmers with smaller land holdings, PCIC can increase the number of farmers served with the same budget allocated by the national government. Now for our distribution channels, next please. <clears throat> so for our distribution channels, we have regional offices, we have PEOs or PCIC extension offices. We have the service desk. So for Luzon, we have six regional offices. For Visayas, we have three. And for Mindanao, we have four or a total of 13 regional offices. At present, we are not following the uh, polit the admi administrative subdivisions of regions that we that we only have 13 regional offices. Hopefully soon we will be following the present subdivision of regional uh, of the regions. And for our workforce, next please. This was also discussed a while ago by Dr. Reyes. We have the regular job order and the consultant. Then it, it can be noted that since 2014 up to 2019, we have a growing number of workforce from 515 in 2014 to 1,203 as of December 31, 2019. Next, please. For our marketing strategies to increase the level of awareness of our clientele, Number one is that we deputize the city or the municipal agriculturists and the agricultural extension workers are PCs, as PCICs and the writing agents and solicitors. We forge partnerships with rural financing institutions, farmers cooperatives, farmers associations, irrigators associations, fish farmer associations, non-government organizations as our underwriting agents. We also forge partnerships with agrarian reform beneficiaries, agrarian reform beneficiaries organizations or ARBOS as underwriting agents. Next, please. As to our information, information, information dissemination tools, we consider this very effective, thus increasing the level of awareness of our of the farmers and fishers. Number one is we conduct massive information dissemination both at the farmers or fishers level and various partner agencies and or interested part parties to orientations, meetings, briefings, and technical forum. We have the production and distribution of effective information and education campaign or IEC materials, such as brochures, posters, tarpaulins, among others. We have the promotion of various programs through the tri-media approach, like radio, television, and newspapers or magazines, and other media platforms such as our PCIC websites, Facebook, and etc. We conduct various marketing activities during caravans, agri-trade fairs, roadshows, and others. We have the development of informative audio-visual presentations, such as PowerPoint presentations and videos. Next, please. We also accredit more farmers' cooperatives, farmers' associations, IAs, agrarian reform beneficiaries organizations, NGOs, rural financing institutions, the city, municipal, local government units, as our underwriting agents and solicitors that serves as our distribution channels. It is worthwhile to note that as of December 31, 2019, PCIC has formed a network of trained and top underwriters and solicitors, numbering around 3,000 majority of which are city agriculturists and or municipal agriculturists of the local government units. <clears throat> Next, please. We have this broadcast media has become one of PCIC's effective information dissemination tool with some PCIC regional offices availing themselves of the services of radio and television networks. As an example, we have the Agri-Insurance on Air, that's in Region 2. We have the DZDA Radio Pangka on the Run. We have the Radio Nang Bayan in Tugigarao City. We have the uh, DWQP 92.1 FM in Kareno Province. We have the Radio Kasanaray, DJRK Radio Pilipinas, and Sunshine Radio 
Santiago City, and Sunshine Radio to Gigarao City. We also set up the DA ATI radio programs in all the regions throughout the country. Next, please. <clears throat> so highlights of PCIC, PCIC's achievements. We were able to increase over time the number of insurance partners and linkages. We were able to develop the PCIC automated business systems, or we call it PUBS. We have the PUBS one, the first one, well, the first that was developed, the underwriting, claims and processing and settlement and information management system. We have the second, the PUBS two, the financial management, and we were also able to develop the smartphone technology used on the film, the field claims adjustment. And it is worthwhile to note that by using this smartphone technology, our insurance adjusters while on field, after conducting the actual field verification of the damaged farm, can already send the damage report or the claims adjustment and verification report to our server. And it can now be downloaded to the regional offices or to the automated provincial PCIC extension offices for processing, even if the adjusters are still on fields. So that would somehow expedite the processing of claims filed by our farmers. Next, please. <clears throat> so we were able to establish many extension offices and service desks. We have the PCIC Regional Information Marketing and Education or PRIME activities. We have the continued capability building activities, the manpower, equipment, and facilities. And for the years 2014 and 15, we ranked fifth and third. And for the, for the years 2016 and 2017 until 2018, we rank first in the GCGs or the Governance Commission for GOCC's scorecard. Next, please. <clears throat> so for PCIC performance on the customer satisfaction survey, for external, for this covers the external or the farmers covered, and for the internal for the PCIC staff and officers. This was conducted by the Development Academy of the Philippines or the DAP, the AP, and this was validated by the Governance Commission of GOCCs or the GCG. In 2019, our rating is 96.46%. In 2018, rating was 95.25%. In 2017, our rating was 92.71%. And in 2016, our rating was 94.5%. Next, please. So, as what have been noted, we have been uh, continuously increasing the number of farmers served under the fully subsidized insurance program. So, under the RSBSA, from 1 million to 1.6 million in 2019. And for the non RSBSA listed farmer funded by our agri agra funds coming from the Banco Central ng Pilipinas. And that is for the penalties of uh, private banks that uh, that are uh, they, have, they have been penalized if there is under or non-compliance of the agri agra law. So these funds, uh, this is the funds that we are using for the non RSB is a listed farmer. We started implementing this in 2018, covering more than 217,000 farmers. And increase this to 490, more than 496,000 farmers in 2019, with the same allocation of 910 million throughout the country, or that's 70 million per per PCIC regional office. Next, please. <clears throat> so this is the graph of the PCIC tenure insurance production. In so far as numbers of farmers covered, so this was already presented by Dr. Reyes recently. So next, please. <clears throat> Again, for our 10-year production and claims, so over time, since 2009 to 2018, 
uh, our product our production we were able to cover 8.7 million farmers with a total claims paid of that's already 12 12 million as of 2019 more than 12 million because we paid 2.2 million in 2019 so 10.6 million the last column last row that's 2.2 so that's already 12.8 billion pesos paid to our farmer claimants next please so on the PIDS recommendations, this is very important in so far as PCIC's operations and awareness is concerned. One of the recommendations as the main tool used for the provision of free agricultural insurance, the RSBSA must be updated to reflect changes in the composition of agri sector. Currently, the Department of Agriculture, per order of Secretary William Dar, they are now updating the RSBSA as this is now the basis of any day support programs, I, I, for example, the RCEF, the Rice Hybridization Program, and etc. So the problem on RSB is the non-inclusion of other farmers can now be addressed because of this current RSB is a updating by the Department of Agriculture. Now, this has been coordinated with the local government units, particularly the city and municipal agriculture office, who are doing the updating and sending the report to the RFO or the regional feed office for encoding the result of the updating of the RSBSA. Next, please. So another recommendation is that the community-based monitoring system may be utilized to identify the geotagged agricultural households in the country. This is a very welcome development for PCIC. Now, PCIC was about to start the geotagging of areas covered by crop insurance last March 2020 using the handheld global positioning system receiver or the HGPS. This was supposed to be used in post planting and claims adjustment activities, but because of the COVID 19, but Later, we will be pursuing this. We even have purchased the demo, two unit, two demo units of the Garmin Montana 680, which has already done, and this has to be implemented nationwide. The good thing of this is that using this receiver, by just walking around the perimeter of the field, we can already geotag the area, determine the exact, determine the exact area of the farm tilled by the insured farmer and its location. Now with the CBMS, we suggest that the geotagging is not will not be limited to the household, but also to include areas tilled or owned by the farmers, because later on, if there's the the geotagging is already done, then we can use this as our reference for the is for the insurance of the farmers that we are giving priority. Next, please. Another pitch recommendation. We have to improve the penetration rates and targeting of beneficiaries for free insurance. So PCIC can establish more partnerships with other institutions in providing information, dissemination, and assistance. So we have PCIC, we are intensifying our, our activities in the prime of the PCIC regional and formation marketing and education activities. We are into attending barangay assembly meetings to even more reach out to unserved subsistence farmers. We also have started partnering with the private insurance industries or what we call the PPP, the Public and Private Partnership for which we have already started. Uh, there were already two meetings or three meetings conducted with the uh, private insurance industries, including the, uh, the associate, the PERA, and of course, with the uh, the insurance commission. So with this, we can also increase the penetration rates. Next, please. <clears throat> so that's the end of my presentation. And thank you. And again, good afternoon. Thank you very much. In Engineer Selting, and we greatly appreciate uh, your response to the recommendations of uh, PIDS and 
we are glad to learn about the actions um, taken by uh, the agency to implement the uh, recommendations of this. Ma'am Sel, uh, before we go to the open forum, uh, would you have any thoughts uh, on PCIC's, PCIC's response? Uh, yes, ju just quickly, we're very pleased to hear that um, PCIC has taken note of our recommendations. In fact, um, I'd like to um, acknowledge the support that PCIC has done, has given to PIDS over the years so that we could do all of these studies. And um, they've been receptive to um, our recommendations. I think one point that I'd like to highlight is in terms of targeting. I remember that during the first batch of our studies, PCIC was targeting farmers with seven hectares or below. And um, when we pointed out that actually um, um, that's actually already uh, would constitute include big farmers because the average farm holding is about uh, 1.4 or something, 1.4 hectares, um, PCIC readily adjusted their um, targeting tool so that they're, now they're focusing on three hectares or below. And I think at this point, we would like to encourage PCIC um, given that they have a wider reach now to further refine the targeting to probably less than two hectares or 1.5 hectares. So that's all. Thank you. Thank you. For Thank you very much, uh, Mamsel. Um, now we will go now to the open forum and uh, we received some um, comments and first of which is from uh, May Solatre and May has a uh, has some comments, some suggestions on how to improve the responsiveness of insurance to natural calamities, as well as on how to um, boost the in information or awareness campaign for agricultural insurance. Mace, Mace Solatra is from the Senate Econ Economic Planning Office. Mace, go ahead. Hello, Mace. Hello? Okay, um, it seems, um, Mace? Okay, let me just read the, the comment of uh, Mace. On the responsiveness of insurance to um, natural calamity, she said, it would be good if the paper also includes the analysis on the responsiveness of agricultural insurance versus vulnerable areas to natural calamities or areas insured and um, which which uh, had claims against areas affected by natural calamities. This would examine whether the most vulnerable farms or areas are being covered by agricultural insurance or not. Um, Amsel, be before I go to the next uh, comment, would you have any uh, uh, comment or remarks on that? As this yeah. is uh, expanding your, your study, I think. Yeah, actually, we have done that in the earlier study, and um, uh, what we found is that it's really more um, at the time um, supply driven, um, mm -hmm. meaning it was really PCIC um, determining um, the priority areas. Although they, they try to cover all of the areas, I think the budget that's allotted to each region determines how many farmers they can actually serve in a particular area. Um, I think this, the determination, what, what, the, uh, what has been suggested by MACE could actually be considered by PCIC in determining the allocation of their funds across regions. Thank you. Okay. Engineer Selfing, would you have any comment on that? Uh, yes. Yes, uh, actually for, for the free insurance coverage under the RSPSA, uh, the instruction coming from the DBM under the GAA in giving us the allocation is that we have to uh, consider the or give more priority to geohazard areas. So that's one. So in fact, uh, we are loosening our we are already loosening our uh, eligi eligi eligibility requirements. Uh, before, during the, before when we were implementing the uh, the market traded uh, insurance, we used to avoid those areas, the geohazard areas. But under the RSBSA, since these farmers need most of the insurance services, then uh, we are covering them, even if they are located in, in the geohazard areas. So there is no dis distinction. Okay, thank you for that, Engineer Salting. 
Okay, let me go to the um, second comment of uh, Mace, and this is with regard to the awareness campaign for agricultural insurance. She said, in order to entice farmers or fisher folk and fisher folk to get agricultural insurance, it is recommended to also conduct a study compiling the testimonies on the benefits of being insured under the PCIC. This would include a documentation of how they were able to recover quickly uh, from the damages brought about by the calamities with the help of agricultural insurance. Most of the paper focuses solely on the problems of getting insured and the tedious process of claiming their in indemnities. Uh, Engineer Selting, uh, you have mentioned a while ago the uh, different dissemination uh, programs and initiatives of PCIC. Would yes, you have any comment on this? Okay, okay. Uh, in during our check distribution, when we distribute the checks to the farmers who suffered crop losses, we usually get testimonies from the farmers during that occasion. So there are several testimonies and uh, we are compiling these testimonies. Then another comment uh, a while ago that there is a tedious process in the processing of claims. I, I, I would like to comment on that because we only have one requirement for the farmer to file a claim. That is to file before we have we have two requirements. The farmer has to file the notice of loss, and after that, the farmer has to file the claim for indemnity. We merge these two forms into one: the notice of loss and the claim for indemnity, so that the claim, the notice of loss, and the claim for indemnity will serve as one. That's the only requirement that we are requiring for the farmer, no other. So. Uh, so the process of claiming is not tedious actually. Once the farmer files the claim for indemnity, then our insurance, the adjusters will go to the field, conduct the claims adjustment and verification, submit the report to the either PEO or to the regional office and process the claims documents. And that's all. So it's very easy for our farmers, for the assured farmers who suffered crop losses to file for a claim. So we only have one requirement actually. Okay. Okay. Thank you for the response. Um, Sheila, may I add something? Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Yeah. Actually, this um, this uh, topic um, has been studied in our earlier um, study uh, set of studies in 2015, 2016, 2014, 2016, um, when we did an impact evaluation of the crop insurance. So we looked at how um, what the farmers, how the farmers benefited from the, from the um, crop insurance, and um, they said that they really appreciated or the the indemnity, the amounts that they got from PCIC was really very useful. One of the problems was that the amount the compensation that they got was really very small for them to be able to plant again the next season. So that was actually one of the um, complaints. Although they noted that um, it has helped them finance partly the next planting season, it has helped them to smooth consumption and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, what they really found was that it was not enough to cover the yes. production cost. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Ma'am Sel. Thank you, Engineer Salting. Uh, okay, our next comment, uh, this time this is this is also from SEPO, from Executive uh, Director Merwin Salazar. E.D. Merwin, please. Hello, E.D. Merwin. Okay, let, let me just read his comment. Free insurance should be given to farmers who are really poor, especially the... Uh, Okay, who are really poor. The RSBSA should include information, not just area of land ownership by farmers, but also total income per farmer because some farmers have other sources of income. Hence, free insurance should be targeted. On Dr. Reyes's presentation, it would be good to see the distribution of premium subsidy by income groups of farmers. Um, income should cover all sources of income. Mamsel? Yeah, um, I, I agree with um, with the suggestion to look at it by by income group. Unfortunately, we don't have that kind of um, 
information, but I agree that um, once we w efforts towards updating the RSBSA, um, doing the CBMS, I think all of this needs to be coordinated because you don't want to collect the data from just one instrument, uh, collect all the information, let's say for RSBSA, and then collect the same set of information for CBMS, which is collecting income data. So I think the strategy is um, to be able to put together the different types of information being collected by different um, monitoring systems and be able to put together this information. Um, I, I think now we're finding that with all of these shocks and calamities and so forth, we need um, more disaggregated information. We need household level information to be able to target well the, the safety nets. And for this, I, I think um, government needs to think seriously about how to put together um, all of these different sources of, of information so that you come up with very good um, registries, very good localized databases. Thank, Thank you, you Marcel. We have a follow up question um, from from uh, Executive Director Morwin Salazar of CEPO and this time uh, this is directed to uh, BP uh, Salting. Can you present the data on claims per year? We want to see how the insurance program of government fared every year. Yes, we sure. have that. Yes, ma'am, we have that data on a per year basis, the claims paid to farmers, number of mm -hmm. farmers. So, but I, I don't have that slide later, but okay. we have that data. It can be, it can be uh, retrieved. It can be extracted. Yeah. Pero sir, ano yung nakikita niyong trend dun sa data na per well, year? But on a year to year basis, well, because the the claims is the amount of claims is uh, directly that's directly of course proportional to the number of farmers insured. So since we are increasing the number of farmers over time, then our claim claims payment also increases. So that's actually the trend. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's yet it has been increasing because it's a function of number of farmers insured. Okay, okay. Our next question, uh, this time this is from uh, Attorney Reggie Tamana of uh, the Villar Foundation. And um, ang question po niya is, what is the program for fisher folk? Sir, well, may, may specific program ba for fisher folk? Yes po ma'am. Uh, our program for physics fisher folks are, one, we have free insurance coverage for their banka, the non-motorized and non-motorized banka, up to three units. And for the motorized banka, for as long as there are used and these are used under the municipal waters. We also cover insurance to aquaculture projects, to inland fish farms. So that's our program for the fishers or the fisher folk. Under the, of course, under the uh, under the free insurance coverage. Okay, and what has been the uptake so far, um, sir? uptake by farmers of the um, agricultural insurance program. So what what is the uptake so far by by fisher folk of the agricultural insurance program? Marami ba tayong naka insure na farmers na fisher folk? Actually we you for our fisher folk we have been compared to our farmers, medyo maliit pa sila but we are slowly increasing with uh, co coordination the coordination with the with the BFAR, so we are increasing now our coverage to, uh, we, we are in fact giving priority also to the fishers. So that's for our fishery insurance. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Um, our next question is from uh, Mr. Dan Agustin, of Mas uh, Director of the Masaganang Sakahan. And th this is addressed to you, Mamsel. Okay, Dr. Reyes, to address the issue on poverty, what do you think if farmers and fishermen be enrolled likewise in SSS as a social protection program? Well, of course, they can they can do so, no, uh, self-employed? Um, yes, um, I, I think that's a, a good suggestion because um, the agri-insurance is, is different. If you're protecting your, your crops, um, and but the SSS would provide you some pension um, you know, when, when you when you retire. So I think it's it would be good to have um, 
more than just one program for farmers and fisher folk and SSS would be um, one of them. Okay, thank you very yes, much. I'd, yes, uh, may I add to that, ma'am? Yes, go ahead, sir. Well, actually, we have a welcome development for that because mm -hmm. just last December, PCIC and SSS forged a memorandum of understanding to work to go together for PCIC to help the our farmers and fisher folks uh, avail of the SSS. So we have now that memorandum of understanding with SSS. Okay, that's good to know, uh, Engineer Salting. Okay, let me <coughs> I just add something about the question in terms of claims. Um, uh, the paper I think that we have shared with the participants, the discussion paper, actually has a table on the number of claimants, depends, uh, the PIDS discussion paper that, that okay. we've shared, has that table on the number of claimants and the indemnity. I, I think what is um, um, uh, up, what is being revealed by that table is that, yes, it has been increasing over time, um, but I, I think what is important to note is that the average claim is around 8,000, if, if my math is correct. Okay. It's still very low. Um, yes. And I think that's one of the reasons why um, the full benefits from agri-insurance still has to be realized because the, the um, compensation that they get um, is not enough really to cover all of the, the production okay. costs. Of course, one may say that, oh, because probably the farm was not completely damaged. But I think even then, um, if you look more closely at, at the data, uh, that's what the data is, is is showing is implying that the amount of compensation that they get is still very low because of the low insurance cover. Oh, yeah, the low insurance yes. coverage. Okay, and I also noticed, Ma'am Cell Engineer Selting, mataas yung uptake ng credit and and life insurance, ano? So, would you have any um, any insight on uh, bakit ganon? Bakit mataas in sa credit and life? Well, of course, you know um, we want. We want to to uh, our, our families to be to be secured in 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 case may mangyari sa atin. But uh, any any uh, particular insights on this? Uh, actually, our our uh, for our credit uh, credit and life term insurance. Right. Actually, it's it's really very cheap. Now, once oh, once no. the farm once the farmer in uh, enrolled with PCIC under the RSBSA, mm -hmm. they used to buy that insurance. Not just okay. for themselves, but also usually uh, all of the family members. Like for um, example, for the, for the accident insurance, mm -hmm. it's only fifty pesos for every fifty thousand farmer. So very okay. cheap. Kaya nga marami. So one farmer, then he or she enrolls the the members of the family. So that's that's why we have more numbers. Matas ang uptick sa CLTI. Okay. And if I can add, actually, um, the one of the reasons I think why you have that uptake is that, as, as mentioned by Mr. Salting, um, the cost is very small, 75 pesos for um, 15,000 15, uh, insurance cover. And so um, some might say, okay, medyo mababa yung uh, insurance cover that we're um, looking for. So in fact, in in our earlier study we actually raised this whether um we should probably leave this to um other uh companies that are already providing private companies that are already providing life and accident um insurance insurance uh, so this uh, is something that uh, pcic can can consider given the limited um personnel that they have uh, mm -hmm. That's something that that they could consider. And as has been mentioned, it's not lim um, it's not limited just to the farmer. But if I remember correctly, Mr. Salting, up to the fourth degree of consumability. Oh. Yes, but I see. <laughs> that's true. Baba. That's true. Okay. Correct. Okay. Correct. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So not necessarily, I know, uh, farmer, yung yung insured. Nah. Yes. Up to I the fourth see. degree. Okay. Of affinity okay. or consanguinity. Okay. Sige po. Okay, our next comment is from uh, NEDA Director, Agriculture Staff Director, Nieva Natural. And she said, free agri, agri and fisheries insurance should be targeted to those who need it most. Insurance should be enough. 
to allow farmers and fisher folk to resume their livelihood after a calamity. Updating and cleanup of RSBSA should be fast track. Okay, ano po na ang update dito? You mentioned earlier na nasimula na ito, sir. May target ano ba? Target uh, completion date for the updating of and cleanup of the R RSBSA? I'm not sure yet, but there is an express instruction of Secretary Dar to update the RSBSA. Okay. It's ongoing. Okay. It's ongoing. Okay. It's very good to hear, sir. And we have a uh, question from Adrian Adbon, um, former uh, research uh, associate of PIDS. And this is for you, Engineer Salting. Ano po ang update sa subsidized agri-insurance ng NFUCIP sa Negros Oriental at a uh, broke program ng Isabela and Cebu province under the former governor? Well, for... Uh, I'm privy to the for the Cebu province. It's uh, yearly, it's ongoing. They are allocating uh, funds for their farmers and fisher folk. In fact, uh, according to our regional manager in Region 7, now for the province of Cebu, they even would want that all, all the, as long as they're is still, still fund from the provincial government. They prefer na yung una gamitin ay yung nanggaling sa kanila. Unahin yung sa kanila bago yung sa RSBSA. Uh, there are also yung other provinces. Um, I have to check it out. Okay. For other provinces. Noted, sir. Okay. <laughs> Mom Sel, would you have anything to yeah. add? Yeah, I'd just like to add, actually, what our, our recommendation regarding that is instead of um, using the LGU funds to um, provide the basic coverage, kasi nga yung sabi nga parang um, the LGU is requesting pwede bang gamitin muna yung funds nila rather than RSPSA funds. Our recommendation really is to use the LGU funds um, to top up the insurance cover. So kung yung RSBSA is providing 20,000 insurance cover, use the additional um, funds from the LGU to increase the insurance cover. I think that would make the agri-insurance um, more effective in terms of mitigating the risk of the farm. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, we have a follow-up question from uh, attorney uh, Reiji Tamani of the Villar Foundation. Um, and this is for you, attorney um, engineer something. Why don't we have insurance cover for coconut farmers that shield them from price depression of coconut? Well, uh, actually for our insurance, uh, that is not yet uh, yung for price, price fluctuation. Di pa cover sa, sa mandate namin. But for, we are piloting in coordination with the uh, PCA. We have we are piloting, but we have not started yet. But the coconut yield insurance, we we are piloting that. We we started our uh, collaboration with the PCA. Hopefully, we can start it soon. That's yield okay. insurance for coconut, but not for the uh, price price fluctuation or market aberrations. Yes. Okay. Thank you for that, um, Engineer Sauti. Okay, I we are we are um, um, reviewing if we still have comments from our Webex uh, participants. Okay, uh -huh. and okay, this is uh, from. Mr. Dan Agustin, uh, he has a comment about uh, the seedlings provided to farmers. Ah, okay, this is actually for Senator for Senator Villar. And sabi niya, thanks for the RCF seedlings provided to farmers and mechanization are big help to farmers. Is there a possibility to increase the budget of other insurance so that claims will not be limited to 20,000, which is not sufficient? Uh, engineer, yung bang ano? Yung coverage Increasing, for oh, 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 oh. so extending up to yung seedling states is that what 
Is there a possibility increasing the budget of, of agricultural insurance so that yung claims that will not be limited to 20,000, which is not sufficient? I think we, for PCIC, then we have no, that's up to the... The under uh, control. Yeah, <laughs> not under our control. It's up to the, you know, to the uh, legislative body if uh, you would increase the budget for the free insurance. Especially okay. now that during the COVID-19, so <laughs> something mm -hmm. like that. Okay. okay, we have already accommodated um, all the questions from our uh, participants. And uh, at this point, may I ask Dr. Reyes and uh, Engineer Selting uh, for their final remarks. Doc Dr. Reyes first and then Engineer Selting. Yeah, uh, I think the key takeaways that we would want you to get from this would be that um, Agri insurance is important. Um, there have been a lot of improvements since the last, uh, since our first study on this. But I think the more critical things to um, work on right now would be the red, the RSBSA, because that's the basis for um, targeting. Um, and there are many ways to to improve it. The second is uh, revisiting the design of, of uh, some of this. Um, uh, programs because there are still some segments that are favored more than the rest. So rice and corn are still heavily favored when we know that HBCCs probably should be uh, are, are more productive, have higher yields, and therefore um, deserve great uh, equal attention as well. And um, and finally, I, I think I'd like to um, also commend PCIC for. Um, continuously um, incorporating improvements in, in the design and we're looking forward to um, um, finer targeting uh, scheme for to be able to direct whatever available funds are there to um, the poorest farmers. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pamsel. Engineer Salting? Okay. Uh, first of all, I um, would like to express my heartfelt gratitude to the PIDS of course, through President uh, Dr. Celia Reyes, when I went over the the uh, motivation of study, now it really touched me because it says that agricultural insurance is used as a mechanism for managing risk, providing a safety net for agricultural producers who suffer from external shocks to their productivity and vital to the development or improvement of the agricultural insurance program. So this means that PID is really see the importance of crop insurance insofar as to the welfare of our farmers and fishers. So with that, I thank you so much for the study conducted uh, by the pitch through Dr. authored by Dr. Celia Reyes and Dr. Aubrey Tabunga. Nikolai Arthur Boromeo, Arkin A. Arbonida, and Carlos Caballero, and the rest of the PID is team for conducting the study towards a more inclusive agricultural insurance program. Thank you very much. Thank you very Good much. Afternoon. Thank you very much, Engineer Selting and Mamsel. Oh, we, what a lively discussion we just had. So, friends, let us uh, give a big virtual clap to um, our uh, resource speakers and to all of you for uh, your active participation. Maraming salamat po. Okay, so our webinar today has underscored a number of important points to improve the impact and inclusiveness of our agricultural insurance program. We saw the importance of increase, increasing the penetration rate through more intensive information and education campaigns to raise farmers' awareness of the program and uh, ways on how to avail it. Also, the need for increasing the insurance cover, um, updating the registry of agricultural producers for better targeting and having um, stronger partnerships with LGUs and other institutions to assess more farmers and make our agricultural insurance program more inclusive. Okay, before we close, we have some reminders and uh, I'm sure you are um, uh, you would like to have a copy of the presentation of Dr. Reyes as well as the uh, presentation of uh, Ms. Uh, Engineer Selting, and you can access uh, the presentations from the PIDS website. Um, the link is uh, flashed on your screen, um, and we will also email you the link after the webinar. 
please also answer the feedback survey that will pop on your screen after this webinar. And in case you missed it, we will also email you the link after the event. Um, your comments are important to us to improve our webinars. Please also follow us on our social media pages. Uh, we have a website which contains all our uh, knowledge resources. You can download all our publications uh, free of charge. Of course, we have a Facebook account and we'd like to thank everyone who watched us on Facebook and to all our Facebook followers who have been continuously uh, 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 following us, following our events and uh, taking note of our publications. And of course, we have a Twitter account. And finally, please allow us to acknowledge the various organizations from government, academe, uh, civil society, business, and the uh, international development community who join us today. And you can see the names of these offices on the screen. So folks, uh, this ends our webinar for this week. Uh, next week on July 9, we will talk about another very important, very interesting issue, which is about early childhood uh, care and development interventions on the ground related to the first 1,000 days of life. So we hope you can join us again. Until then, stay safe, everyone. Stay safe and stay healthy. Marani salamat po. Thank you, Angela. Thank you. Salamat po sa inyong lahat. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Thank you po. Salamat po sa lahat ng atin ngayon. Thank you, Dr. Reyes. Mena. No, no.